Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome to this week's Kafir Middle East Update. It is the week of January 23rd, and we're going to look back on the different events that's transpired over this last week in the Middle East, primarily uh, in regards to Israel. Just a reminder that this uh, YouTube has an accompanying PDF note page and you can access that on our website at holygroundexplorations.com or it should just be a link on the YouTube page. There's much more information on the notes that we have time for that we don't have time to give uh, for the YouTube. So make sure you grab that. So unfortunately, we begin with some uh, very, very, very tragic, sad news. In the worst day uh, for Israel since the IDF began its invasion of the Gaza Strip, 24 soldiers were killed Monday afternoon. And it's one, 21 were killed in a single Hamas attack and three others were killed in a separate incident. Again, we mourn the loss of the soldiers and um, we just take a moment to continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray that the captives would be set free and that God would have his way in his time. And may their memories be blessed, amen. Um, a lot of chatter this week, a lot of word salads, a lot of back and forth in regards to ceasefire discussion. Interestingly enough, Israel countered the latest, uh, what is almost a joke in terms of what Hamas presented as a peace plan. We'll get to that in a second, but uh, I just read last night that Israel made an offer to cover uh, the peacemakers <clears throat> that uh, Israel will offer 60 days without war in exchange for all of the captives being set free. That's what's on the table currently, and we'll have to wait and see as the pressure continues to mount in the give and take of the discussions of ceasefires. Uh, this is our news bite separate section, so there's a lot of pithy little things here. Uh, Defense Minister Gallant warns Lebanon that it's crunch time and he's given them to the end of the month to deal with the situation with Hezbollah diplomatically, but basically says at the end of this month, military action will ensue. So we'll have to wait and see how all of that transpires. But again, that's the sword rattling and uh, things such as that. That's the world in which we're living in right now. <clears throat> the IDF has found the terror tunnels in Khan Yunus where up to 20 hostages were held in very inhumane conditions. Uh, once again, they found cages. They found, uh, uh, you can just sort of Google that if you want to see it with your own eyes. Uh, once again, the labyrinth of terror tunnels was far beyond what Israel could even imagine. And then, you know, this phrase, we've been seeing this on social media sites, from the river to the sea, Palestine should be free. And, and, and you see some of the uh, commentators actually asking the people that are shouting this, so what river are you talking about? Which sea are you talking about? And obviously the majority of them have no idea. It's just mob mentality, it's chanting, and it's anti-Semitism because that phrase, from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free, is simply the only way that transpires is with the complete elimination of Israel. But now, uh, one of the Hamas leaders has extended. His chant is no longer from the river to the sea. Now it's from Rasha Nikra to, Al to Elat. So not only from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean, but now from the Lebanese border up at Rosh Hanikra, all the way down to the tip of the Red Sea in Elat. 
So if there's any doubts of what a two-state solution would look like for Hamas, there is no Israel. So they truly do believe in a one-state solution, but it's with the elimination of Israel. <clears throat> and then finally, um, the Iranian um, Republic Revolutionary Guard Corps and Hezbollah, uh, the terrorist organization, have been, it's noted now that they're located, they're on the ground in Yemen, helping the Houthis attack the Red Sea shipping vessels. Again, Iran has armed, trained, and funded the Houthis, and they've stepped up now in terms of supplying weapons to the militias in the wake of the war in Gaza. So once again, the presence of Hezbollah, as well as the Iranian Revolutionary Corps in Yemen at this time, helping the Houthis. <clears throat> Make no mistake about it, Iran is the leading, um, they're the ones that are funneling all the resources into these terrorist organizations, whether it's the Houthis, whether it's Hezbollah, or whether it's Hamas, it's all coming from, you know, it's depicted as the octopus. You can cut off one of those tentacles, but the head, make no mistake, it's Iran. Okay, so now in our major articles, some of these peace plans. Um, the Wall Street Journal uh, posted or published this, that the U.S., Egypt, and Qatar are pushing Israel and Hamas to accept a comprehensive plan that would end the war. Now, here's some insights, or here's some details about that plan. The plan whose complete implementation would take 90 days would reportedly bring all fighting to an extended halt, during which time the Palestinian terror group in the first stage would free all civilians. Israel would then simultaneously release hundreds of Palestinian security prisoners, and they would pull out completely of the Gaza cities, and they would allow the freedom of movement in the Strip, they would cease drone surveillance over Gaza and double the amount of aid entering the Hamas-controlled territory. Then the next stage, uh, Hamas would release female IDF soldiers and the bodies of the kidnapped victims that they have killed. And then the third, and, and of course, Israel then would release more Palestinian prisoners and then the third phase would have Israel pull completely out of Gaza um, while Hamas would free the last hostages, soldiers, and those that they would deem would be fighting age men that they would consider to be as soldiers. So uh, needless to say, total victory for who? For Hamas. They would remain in power. And for Israel, total surrender, total defeat, the death of so many young soldiers for nothing. No security, no peace. Needless to say, it was refused. Now, Biden and Bibi are bickering over all of this. <clears throat> Joe Biden, Benjamin Netanyahu, you know, recently, oh, within the last three days, they have spoken, but in this article, it noted that they hadn't spoken in over a month. Um, after a tense phone call between uh, Biden and Bibi, Biden actually hung up abruptly on the Israeli prime, premier, prime minister. And the words of U.S. officials uh, cited that the report of these tensions between Biden and Netanyahu is said it's with immense frustration. And then when Anthony Blinken was recently here in Israel, he was quoted as chastising Netanyahu and calling his war cabinet a joke during a closed door meeting last week and said that their plans for 
post-war Gaza was simply pie in the sky. So these are these upper level negotiations that are taking place between two allies. And then we have the latest, which I called on Bibi and Biden. I mentioned the, uh, the, the peace plan that was presented. Netanyahu rejected that. Um, again, because it promised a variety of things that seems appealing, right? Uh, a Saudi normalization, etc. But the bottom line is that you're back to this two-state solution, this Palestinian state. And at this particular time, there's no way and you know where that Israel is going to accept any kind of two-state solution. So Bibi's complete rejection of a two-state solution, the ramifications of that is there's a growing, um, well, put it this way, five new Senate Democrats that uh, were supporting wholehearted Israel has drawn back and said, we need to reestablish what kind of aid we're giving to the Israeli military because of their lack of um, negotiating peace at this particular time. And again, um, Netanyahu is going to continue to push back uh, even though Biden, and this is the next article, which I simply call, call a word salad. So Biden had actually come out to say that Bibi is actually open to the idea of a two-state solution. And so while the Hebrew or why the Israeli media is accusing of Bibi telling Biden one thing, but then he's telling the Israeli public something else, um, the unusual move of Bibi was to release a statement on Shabbat. That's hardly ever done. And his statement, he says, repeated his consistent position for years. Here it is. Listen carefully. After the elimination of Hamas, Israel must remain in full security control of the Gaza Strip to ensure that Gaza will no longer pose a threat to Israel. And this conflicts, of course, with the demands that are being enforced or pushed upon Israel to give the Palestinians some sort of sovereignty. The Israeli Prime Minister envisions a demilitarized Palestinian state with full Israeli control. So here's the word salad. That's presented on Shabbat, and now Biden is talking to the media saying, oh, well, actually, Bibi is willing to entertain a, a number of types of two-state solutions, noting that there's a number of countries that are members of the UN who do not have their own militaries. So the rhetoric effectively sums up the challenge that Jerusalem and its strongest supporter on the Hill, what they actually face today is Washington's vision for the region is becoming crystal clear politically, and it does not mesh with the Israel of today. So despite what you hear, no way there will be a two-state solution. No matter how they term it, or whatever, Israel has to control the Gaza Strip. Just like, unfortunately, what lies north of Israel. The only way that people will ever return to that Negev area, Starot, etc., is if Israel is in complete charge of the Gaza Strip and it's completely demilitarized with no Hamas. As I mentioned, the same may soon hold true with the North in relationship to Hezbollah. So, last article for this week is simply, who are the Houthis? Uh, again, 
a tribe in Yemen. They're creating quite the stir. They're attacking ships in the Red Sea, shutting down uh, transports, exports, imports, etc. You need to understand who they are. As I've already mentioned, uh, Hezbollah, as well as the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, are pulling the strings. They're being supplied and armed by Iran, no doubt about it. And so they are a tribe in Yemen, which uh, again is uh, anti-Israel, anti-America, even their flag, you'll see in the slide here, their flag simply reads Allah Akbar, death to America, death to Israel, curse the Jews, and victory to Islam. So in case you're wondering, in, in case you're not listening, they have flags flying everywhere, letting you know exactly where they stand. Let me read it again to you. Allah Akbar, death to America, death to Israel, curse the Jews, victory to Islam. So as Iran extends its influence through the Middle East, funding both Hezbollah and Hamas, you can add another H to that list the Houthis. So it's crucial that we educate ourselves about these organizations and work hard to make sure that they do not survive, period. So <laughs> that's about it. I will say this one last thing. There's an article here about CJ Strauss. I'm an avid football fan, as you probably know, and uh, I never thought much about the Ohio State quarterback who's leading uh, Houston, but I read this article and now I'm a big fan because I have found that every time he's interviewed, he wants to speak about Jesus. And so NBC, realizing after a big victory, uh, they've censored his speech because they consider mentioning Jesus Christ as some sort of form of hate speech. Now, had he talked about transgenders or Palestinians? Uh, no problem. But in mentioning Jesus, they have, in a sense, censored him from speaking about Jesus. And so, again, the world in which we're living, you can talk about transgenderism, you can talk about Hamas, Palestinians, you can talk anti-Semitism, but don't you dare talk about Jesus, the world today. Well, that's our report for this week. Uh, again, go through all the slides. We can never forget, it's 109 days now that there have been people that are kidnapped and surviving in the worst, most humane conditions. And may Jesus set the captives free. Please join in prayer in this day. God bless you and shalom.